Thank you. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> if you could so, start. Okay, so um, yes, let me go back. Sorry, I have to get that screen cleared. So this is Richard Ackerman. I'm the um, CASAS program manager of the TOPS Pro and ETEST software. And I'll be presenting today the TOPS Pro Enterprise transcripts. It's a new feature in TOPS Pro Enterprise. Uh, we are still in development of it. Um, and I have with me today, Gabriel. He's, he's the primary um, programmer for this feature and he'll be helping me through the demonstration. What we've done, and I'll show you the um, agenda here, um, first, I'm going to show you the network diagram to show you where transcripts fits in to everything that's Tops Pro Enterprise. And then we'll do a demonstration. And it's a recorded video demonstration from our development server. Um, we're going to be releasing this, we think, on July 1st, uh, very close to that date anyway. Um, it is mostly done, but there are some things that um, we'll point out that are the corrections that will be made. So the video is still a few days old, and there's things that will change from this video. So I'll try to point those out when that happens. Um, and then the last section is I'll show you the reports that we have for the transcripts. <clears throat> so um, we'll start with a diagram. I'm going to close my chat windows. That's not in my way. Um, to show us where transcripts fits in to the big picture. I don't know why my down arrow is not working. It's, oh, maybe that's why. OK, so um, the core of TE is the accountability module. This is what the staff uses. Um, and the test delivery, which is what the students use. And even though those are very different interfaces and they have very different content, they do share the same common database. And those of you who have been using TE forever and ever know that very well. Um, that's been the core of TE and ETEST for a long time, well, ever since it was Tops Pro Enterprise. And then um, along came not too long ago, maybe three years ago, the student portal. Um, so the student portal is um, actually a separate application and it has its own database, that mediating database, that um, has an API with a common database. And the reason it's separate like that is we didn't want students to be logging in for security reasons and other reasons into TOPS Pro itself. So that's why, and it's also a web-based application and so on. So it is something separate. And it was developed originally for um, our employment and earnings survey. Um, and it's also a place where students can take practice tests and enter demographics and view their educational results. So that's um, where the student portal is today, but it continues to um, be developed further. But we're talking today about um, transcripts, which I'll get to in a moment. But another recent addition to this whole network diagram, the reason I'm showing it to you, is uh, Classmate. It's a mobile application that teachers can use for giving attendance. So they don't have to go into TE at all to take attendance if they want. Um, there's another sessions on this, so I won't go into any detail here, but there's a teacher version of Classmate for attendance, and there's a student version where the student and teacher can chat with each other in the mobile application. But as you'll see by that line, it's also connected to the student portal. So with that Classmate application, the student is able to see their educational results, um, update their um, own demographic information, and so on. <clears throat> so into this big picture, we've recently added transcripts. And... Um, it's, it's, not, it's not physically a different application. It's actually embedded in the accountability part of TE. But I've, I've um, demonstrated it this way with the purple because it's actually a different module in, in TE. And it's one that will have an associated cost. Um, it won't be a lot, but we haven't determined what it is just yet. So you can ask me after Summer Institute and I can give you more information. But that it'll be a new package. And there'll be transcripts and matriculation that go together so that a student can come to your adult web school, um, your adult school website, and, and you can offer your curriculum on the website, but then when they click it, they would come to the student portal, they would register for classes, um, that module would also take care of payment processing and so on. So that matriculation part is still in development, but transcripts is done. So people who might want to pilot transcripts can do so, you can contact us um, via tech support or me personally after the Summer Institute. And uh, you can pilot that at no cost if you'd like to be a pilot agency. So we can talk more about that later. But I just want to show that transcripts is a, a new module that will be linked with the matriculation module. And with that, I'm going to jump into the transcript demo to make sure we have enough time to cover everything. If you do have an urgent question, you can try to put it through and, and we will try to take it while we're going through. But it may be also best to put, save it for the end. So we'll just see how that goes. Um, 
So there's four parts to the demonstration I'm about to give you. Um, one is setting up a graduation policy. So that's where you, you name your policy and you give it its in use status and you set up the graduation subjects. The second part is the graduation program information. So that's where you set the, the parameters for a graduation program and you add the subjects that belong to it. The third part is the graduation program itself where you assign students to it and you set up classes. So those three first three steps is something you only do once, right? You have to set up everything. Um, and the fourth one is the one where you would most actively be using um, over and over, right? Because that's when a student comes in from another school, you enter in their past history, transcript information, and TE will be keeping up to date with whatever they do in your agency. So that fourth part is what you would do on a day-to-day -day basis. The first three is all part of the setup. So we'll go through all four of those in the demonstration. So I now need to uh, load that. Here it is right here. Now, as I said, this has been recorded already on our development server. Um, <clears throat> I hope you all can see this well. I don't have a way to make it larger, so I apologize for that. Um, but hopefully you can see enough and we'll be narrating our way through. So you start by going to organizations and graduation policies. And you click new. And obviously we're at Rolling Hills Adult School. This is our um, database that we do for training. And we're going to name our policy graduation 2021 because this is the first year we're offering it. And we have two options. One is to use a template that we've already set up. And the other is to create your own from scratch. But for our demonstration, we'll use the default template. And actually, it's not a bad option in all cases because you can fully edit it. You can add to it, you can delete it, and so on, as you'll see in this demonstration. So it doesn't hurt to start with this. And as you can see, these are very common subjects that you know yourself. Um, you probably have English, math, social studies, and all these things. So it's not a bad place to start. Now, you have to choose a status and obviously we're under development and what that means is that we're still creating our policy and so we can change it at will um, make changes as we need to as long as it's in under development but when we change it to in use we can't uh, make those changes anymore then becomes the permanent policy and later we can archive it we'll talk about that more later <clears throat> So here you see some subjects, but we don't want them the way exactly they are. There's electives also, that's important um, for most programs, they do have electives. <clears throat> so we wanna modify this, it's not exactly how Rolling Hills is set up, and we want foreign languages to be its own uh, main subject. So we can easily change these things. <clears throat> if we double click, we can um, edit that. And there we see what the subject name is now. We're just gonna take out foreign languages. <clears throat> we're gonna add a main subject. That's a button there at the bottom and just type in foreign languages there. And you can see that's that easy to add a new main subject. Now, let's say we have some um, divisions we want to algebra. So it's not just algebra, but we have a basic algebra and we also have an advanced algebra. So by clicking that add division button, we can make these subtopics. As you can see now, we have math, algebra, basic algebra, and then we have an advanced algebra. So it's that easy to add anywhere you want to, either as a main subject or as um, sub subjects. We can also delete. Um, <clears throat> we don't need, uh, what was the other one that we're gonna take out? I think, oh, that was it, okay. And so now we're gonna to go to say it's in use that we finished our policy. You obviously probably wouldn't do it that fast, but for demonstration, we have a solid policy. And so we wanna keep this. So once we say yes, it becomes a permanent policy and it's the one that we're gonna to apply to programs. Later on, we might need to archive it because students have used this policy and they're no longer with the program, but for history, we need to know which, which uh, policy they were using. So that's the purpose of the archive. Now what we want to do is um, assign the classes that are teaching these subjects. And we can do that as easily as just clicking select class. And immediately we get a pop up that shows all of the classes that are available. And it's, since it's so easy and available, we're just going to click these check boxes. But if we wanted to filter, we could type something like English and it would just show our courses that have English in the course name. 
So we have these two different ways of doing it. This is the easiest, so we're just clicking. And now we have these three courses that teach English, but we made a mistake, as you'll see. Um, algebra shouldn't really be there. But first, we're going to set these uh, credits, how many credits each of these classes um, needs to have for English. And then we can easily remove that algebra, which is obviously a mistake. Hey, Richard, there's a question in the chat. Uh, um, what about departments for transcripts? For transfers? Or transcripts. OK, we'll, we'll get to that. That's, that's coming. Yeah, so right now what we're doing is we're still setting up the policy for, for our program. So um, we'll come to that. I have a question, Richard. Yes. Um, these classes, we use Edgenuity for our um, HSD program. Do we have to type in um, the class name or would that, where is this popping up from? Is that? You guys so, already... these, so where this is popping up from is, is these are these are classes that you already have set up at your school. So these are the classes that you're teaching okay. um, that, that you set up. Um, I have heard that, that there's, a, there's a number of you that do use Edgenuity. And if they have an export, um, then we'll look at that and, and look into, um, I'm, I'm sure there wouldn't be any problem with us importing um, that information into TE. So we obviously don't have that yet, but if Edgenuity does have an export, we will definitely look into adding that. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to go back to play. So one thing I'll point out in those two subjects, um, that HSC, um, high school equivalency, all subjects, what that really is is an independent study sort of class. Um, so it has all kinds of subjects and just algebra happens to be one of them. So that's why we've assigned it here. We also have a class that's algebra one. So that's very pure, but you can also have classes that have, you know, a wide variety of subjects. <clears throat> so we'll save this. We're not going to do all of it, obviously, for demonstration purposes. We just want to get it started. And there's another way to do this. This is just the alternate. You can go to the class instance. So it's instead of doing that in a global start, you could go to that HSC all subjects class we were talking about, and you can find um, that same information down here under the graduation program section. And those are the subjects that this um, class is teaching. And we're going to demonstrate that now by adding subjects. See, there's an add, add subject button at the bottom. And we can add any of these that were set up in our um, graduation policy for 2021. And because this is an independent study, so this is students coming to a lab, perhaps, and they're taking a learning management system course, they could actually be doing all of these different subjects um, in this one class. And that's why it's um, <clears throat> so large. <laughs> so we just click Save after we've added those. And then click refresh. And now they show up over here. So remember, this is the, where we had started, but we could have also added them where we did under the class instance. So now we're going to go to part two, which is graduation programs. Sorry, that went by real fast. I'll back up just a second. So this is, um, we saved this after we had made those changes under the class instance. And now we're going to go to organization. And then there's a graduation programs just under policies. So under program is where we make a specific one to fit our policy. So in this case, um, we're using graduation 2021. That's the policy we just created. And now we have a program name and we'll just make this very specific to what it is. It's our high school diploma program and needs 160 credits. So you can obviously name it whatever you want, but we're just doing that obvious name. And then we would set the number of credits required, which obviously is 160. So we put that in. And here's where we decide how we want to compute GPA. We can use uh, plus and minus grades or not use them. So if we say no, then we, we won't record plus or minus grades. It depends what you do at your school. And then we also have the option to um, use overflow excess credits that will go to electives. You can do that yes or no. And again, we have the option to use our um, template or to create from scratch. So we're going to 
go ahead and save. And here's where we have the graduation subjects. And now um, they need to add up to 160. <clears throat> and right now they're all set at zero. So this is where we have to say how many are required. So we have this warning at the top and I'm, I'm sorry that's too difficult to read, but basically it's telling us that we don't add up to 160. And we have this total down here at the bottom that shows zero, so that's pretty obvious. So what we're gonna do now is um, add 30 credits to English, add 40 to electives, and then add 10 credits to each of the specific subject areas. And in that way, we'll get up to our 160 graduation requirement. And we're also gonna give a demonstration of adding an overflow and we'll do that to geometry. <clears throat> First, we're finishing there. Oh, that's right, we don't have fine arts. So we just deleted fine arts. So this is where we can also modify our program to make it specific. It may be slightly different than what we put in our policy. So here we're just tightening it up and these are the exact subjects that we want to be in our program and it equals 160. But now we can also add an overflow. And so into geometry, <clears throat> will allow five excess credits and they can go to advanced algebra. So after we're comfortable with all of these changes, we would go from under development and set it to in use. And it's the same kind of warning that we have with the policy. Once, once it becomes in use, it's permanent. We also have archived option for program as well. And then we'll save. So we've showed you part one and part two. Part three is going to be adding students to a program. So we're gonna to go to records, graduation and enrollments. And here we'll click new. And here's where we'll have uh, the ability to select any student. We're just gonna go with Simon and the graduation program that we just created, which is that 160 credits. And then the date that Simon entered the program. Uh, we'll talk more about these later, but they're obviously labeled, you know, how many credits he's earned so far, what his grade point average is, but he hasn't done anything yet, so those are going to be zero. <clears throat> so we don't have any records here yet, so there's nothing to show, but we'll see something later. And you have this um, button to update credits earned, and that will force an update um, rather quickly. I think it's like 30 seconds. Is that right, Gabriel? This is to have an immediate update. At, at okay. each 30 seconds is a, like a, an automatic update from the system. Very good. So can you take it from here, Gabriel? Yes, so we're going to, uh, to show how to uh, record credits for this student. We just enrolled in the graduation program. So we're going to class enrollments and we're going to, uh, we obviously already enrolled the student in some classes before for presentation purposes. And now we're going to uh, edit each of these records and we're going to add credits. So you see, we have this class is teaching basic algebra and advanced algebra and the maximum credits to earn in each uh, topic is 10, but we'll just put eight and three. And we need to, to uh, endorse credit for graduation program in order to be considered for GPA computation. And also we need to set up a, a grade. Uh, and that's all we need to do for the class enrollment. Now we're going to quickly make changes to the other records.
and the last one now. Okay, so now we have some credits recorded for the student. And if we go back to No, actually now we're going to show the part with recording external transcripts from a school the student uh, attended previously. So we click on new and we select the student, which will be the first student in the list. We need to add a school name. There are obviously no records uh, on first use, but later everything we write here is saved. So we're going to click on add new. We'll set up some school name, let's say Alta Vista. And the date of the transcript record. And now we're going to click on save. And at this moment, we have the ability to add uh, detailed information. We click on this button, add record. And we need to select the graduation subject from our policy. And the number of credits earned. And these fields are all optional, but it's good to fill them. There are no records, but as soon as we record something, it will be available for uh, later use. And finally, we need to set up the, the grade for this uh, for this uh, amount of credits. And we can add more records by either clicking in the button or using the keyboard with the Control plus M. As, as we add records, they are put at the top in order to avoid scrolling. And all the values that are previously recorded are available for selection. So most likely you've been given a piece of paper that the student has given you from their previous school and it had the list that started with geometry and English was second. So don't worry about the fact that geometry now appears third because you'll see after we save this, it's gonna flip the order. Exactly. And we're just gonna enter three. So we're, we're gonna be done here in a moment. Okay, now we can save the record. Obviously a real transcript will be much longer, but for our purpose is enough. You see the order is now flipped. And if we're now going back to this uh, program enrollment record, we're going to use the refresh button under more. There is, as I said, there is a, a background job that uh, updates this data as uh, changes are made to the other records. So here we're just waiting for the 30 seconds to pass. We could also use the, the red button to trigger an immediate uh, update, but it's better not to overload the system. So now we're going to more, refresh record. And here is now the summary of the data we enter in the other records. We see the student earned 93 credits and the grade point average computed so far is 2.54. And at the top, we have a table showing the summary by graduation subjects, how many credits earned, 
how many required, how many remaining. The red lines are the ones that we need to address. The student needs more credits. So here's where you have the immediate status on the student. You can see where they are. And then we have the detail uh, where each credit value is coming from, from a class activity or from a transcript record. And we have this uh, uh, additional data. And we also have the possibility to open the original record to see, uh, to verify the data is accurate. We also have some cases of overflows. You see the electives here, five and one credits or overflow from English and geometry. And also the advanced algebra, five credits overflow from geometry. And now we're going to just open some records. So this takes us directly to the source of the, the credits. Uh, the credits are in the show here in the, in the program enrollment record. So just to state that, obviously, the reason there's class activity and transcript record is class activity is what's happened at your adult school, whereas transcript record is what came from a previous adult school. So here was five credits earned in English from the previous adult school. And as Gabriel just showed, we can drill down to those. This is more like an audit feature to make sure the, the computations are correct. And that completes the demonstration. So I'm going to close this and now we'll look at reports. Let's get back to our PowerPoint. Before we get to reports, is it possible to ask questions on that? Sure, go ahead. I have a couple. Um, one, when you're adding credits from outside of the school uh, from transcripts, do you have to add them all at one time or is it possible to go back and add an additional transcript later? You can add at any time. There's no restriction here. Okay, great. So the yep. data will just keep update as you add more credits. Okay, perfect. Because uh, sometimes students, you know, they come in from multiple schools. Um, the second question I have is when archiving your transcripts after a student leaves, um, can we access that archived transcript again? Because uh, yes, sometimes our students come back years later. Yes, yes. Okay. So everything remains in the system. Okay, awesome. And then if we wanted to take that same transcript, we just went from a 180 to a 140. Are we able to then transfer that to the 140? Uh, or do we have do, to start that transcript all over? Do you mean to transfer to a different graduation program? Correct. Yes, because if you, uh, but then you'll, you'll really need to enter the information as a transcript record, uh, like uh, in the new graduation program. Okay, so even if they're our own student and we had them in there at a 180. Yes, but since, yeah, since this is still in development, we maybe will have a feature that uh, can do this uh, transfer from one graduation program to another. Sure, but just for, just for today's purposes, not in future, but for today, if we were to start it, we would then want to add that student in with whatever they had and then alter it accordingly through that same process you just went through. Exactly. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. I have another question um, regarding the for training purposes, because I saw in the transcripts that it said HSE, all subjects, HSE, mathematics, etc. Um, just if we have new people learning how to do this and they're new to entering transcripts and what it means, what classes, grades, program, department, etc. I think it, it's just I'm just going to say this. I think it would be helpful not to include HSE. Those are the high set program classes because years ago the state said we could no longer convert GED or scores into a grade and credits for the diploma. So when I see the HSE included with this transcript, I get confused and I kind of don't want to. No, you, you don't have to worry about that because this, this was just set up because we have this um, demonstration database that had an HC, HSC course in it. That's ours, actually. Oh, okay. Well, there wasn't, there wasn't any thought. I mean, in other words, it's going to use your own courses and it's going to use your own um, class names and so on. So, um, yeah, don't, you don't have to make that association that it needs to be this way at all. It'd be however you want to set it up. I have another question uh, regarding the graduation policies. 
Um, why is policy being used as a term? Um, I guess because um, it's it, the, the requirements we were given is at the top level, you set, you set a policy that um, has the graduation subjects um, and the year that the policy starts. Um, I'm not sure if there's other aspects to it that, that would change, but, but I guess, Gabriel, you, can you speak more to the difference between policy and program? So the policy establishes what subjects are going to be available for uh, one or more graduation programs, because from one policy, you can define more graduation programs, one with more credits or one with fewer credits. Right, that is, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. So that was the example that was already given, is that you know, a program changed from 140 credits to 180 credits. And so that would be two different programs under the same graduation policy. I see, because since a lot of us are using ASAP, they have group, group A or group B, group C, and whenever a policy changes, and it's from the state that, for example, we no longer have to use uh, health as a separate department except to earn credits in. They don't, they, students don't have to get health credits. Back then they did, there was a time when they did, that was group B for us, but then we reverted back to group A. So that's why it's policy. Is that what that's supposed to mean, policies? Groups? Yeah, I, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't want to use ASAP as our model because that sounds too nebulous right. to me. So, so in our, in our program, we would change the program if there was a change to the subject matter of the program. Maybe so you I, could I, name it something different than policy? Well, we're open to recommendations. So absolutely, if, if you have a recommendation, please uh, send it to me. Um, um, we're, even when we're out of the development stage that we're in, we can still make changes. Um, and we'll also be going through a pilot. So yeah, ab absolutely. Contact me after uh, the Summer Institute if you have anything anyone else would like to see differently as well. Thank you. So Richard, um, this is Connie Peckettes, and I have a question about access. Um, I find the more people that have access to TE, the more my state reports can get confused and messed up. And so what will be the user access for doing these transcripts? Is that another job that the data people will now have to take on? Or is there a user access just for entering graduation requirements? Do you want to answer that, Gabriel? It can be either way. I mean, yeah, so, so you'll be in up to you. Right, you'll, you'll be in control of that because you'll, um, as the TE enhanced user, you can assign who has, who has access to the transcripts. They're, they're definitely their own module, so they have their own set of rights. Thank you. Any other questions? The last part is reports, which I'll go to next, unless there's any questions about what we've seen so far. Richard, you should also check the chat uh, window because there are many questions there. Yeah, I can't see chat, so I have to hold on. Well, actually, um, I think what I'll do is um, f make sure we finish the presentation and, and then we'll go to chat, if that's okay with everyone. Um, I just wanna make sure we get through. So here we are, the section three. So we have four reports so far that we'll show you and we'll create more reports as they're needed. Um, we have a graduation program summary and that shows the subject and credit requirements as well as the students by credits earned and GPA. And then number two, we'll show you the graduation program detail that has student credits required, earned and remaining. So you're seeing something that's more um, detailed that's related to the summary and the student performance, you know, how they're doing in each of those subjects. Um, part three is uh, class graduation credits. You have the class structure for independent study that we were talking about where we had that um, HSE may not have been a good name, but it was in any way an independent study um, class and student performance by subject. And then finally, student graduation credits. We may rename some of these. It may be that number four is actually better named as a transcript. That's something we can talk about with you and decide. But it shows the class activity at the adult school and the credit history from previous schools. So that number four may actually be what you traditionally call your transcript. And you can decide that when you see it. So that is the end of the PowerPoint. What I'll do now is uh, move over to those. Reports. There we go. 
So I hope you can see this okay. This is the graduation program summary. So our agency is Big Community, um, Big River Community College. It's uh, one of our play databases um, from Rolling Hills. The policy name is uh, Graduation 2021. The policy is in use and it has a start date. Um, the program name was um, HSD, as you saw us um, naming that, 160 credits. And it tells us that we do compute plus or minus grades for GPA, and we do use uh, overflow excess credits. So then we have the subjects um, that, that apply to this program and how many credits are required and where the overflows are. So you have that summary at the top of the report. And then there's a subsection and this shows how many are enrolled, <clears throat> how many have graduated, not graduated, and who are eligible, as well as uh, their progress toward graduation. So you have the GPA there, average GPA. And then you have these uh, details. So these are individual students, obviously when they started, if they finished or not, credits earned, eligible, and so on, and grade point average, which for me is cut off because I have uh, another screen over it, but I assume you can see it. That's no, just the second page. All right, so I'll go to the next report. That was the program summary. Here's a program detail. Uh, may I add Aren't something you? here? Sure, sure. I'm going to go back to the last one. Okay, so uh, for those familiar with the uh, reporting TE, you know there are drill down one options usually, and for this uh, report as well. So we can drill down from graduation program summary to graduation program detail by right clicking on the student name, and can also see for this uh, uh, intermediate header here with the enrolled and graduated and so on. We can see what population makes exactly every uh, cell number. So we can see who's uh, who are those 14 that are progressing and so on just by clicking on the cell as those familiar with reports in TE know uh, we have these options to go directly to the to the data from the reports. Yeah, since this is, this is not since this is a PDF, um, I can't show you the drill down, but you um, who in OTE know how that works. And as Gabriel just described, you can drill down on student and all of these uh, up here. Thank you, Gabriel. All right, so here's the detail. So the similar heading as we saw in the previous report. And now here we have um, the required credits for each of the subjects, um, how many have earned so far and what, what's remaining. So this is a report for just one, one student. Yeah, sorry. It goes page, page by page for each student. Yeah, so the student is uh, Leila Barrios. That's what we have here at the top. And this, this report has I can't scroll over to see how many pages it is, but yeah, as Gabriel said, there'd be 47, one. 40, uh, 44. Okay, very good. So for this one student, this is, you can see the progress the student has made, how many remaining credits they have in each. So in advanced algebra, she's uh, of the 10 required, she has eight that she's earned and that has two remaining. And then we have the detail down here. So I assume those of you who have transcripts um, functionality have a similar report to this. If there's anything missing, you can let us know. Now I'll move on to the next report. This is class graduation credits. So up here, we just have the agency, the site, and this applies to a class. This is our HSC all subjects class again. And here's uh, showing that it's using the graduation policy 2021 and that it's in use, the subjects and the max credits for each. And then we have the details. And I, I forgot to mention this as we went through the, the demonstration, I said there's some things we need to correct. This is one of them. So um, what we show is this grade of C applying to all these subjects. So that's not correct. We'll have um, an actually a separate grade for English, a separate grade for geometry, world studies and so on. So that's one of the changes that will be coming after the Summer Institute. But otherwise, this is pretty standard information, giving this detail, and it just goes on and on for every student. Maria Blue has only taken three subjects, and that's the, that's the information. And then we'll go to the last report. 
in the student graduation credits. Do you want to talk about this one, Gabriel? So this one groups uh, the credits earned in class activity in the current agency and also the credits coming from external transcripts from previous schools. So if we just uh, scroll to the second page, I think that that student will have uh, also transcripts, yes. So this student, Blue Maria, has this class activity in three classes. We have this, uh, these credits and also at the bottom, there's another table showing the credits coming from, uh, from transcripts. So you have your past history at the bottom and you have the current at the top of what's happened at your adult school. Yes, and these, uh, these reports have some uh, options to switch uh, on and off uh, this uh, area. So you can only see the transcripts or only see class activity as you wish or both, which is the default. So that's just a report parameter. Yes. All right, that is, those are all our reports. Do we have any reports while we're, I mean, sorry, questions about reports while we're here? I have a question. Will it include a Cal GPA on these transcripts? What's a Cal GPA? California GPA, because there's a different GPA for that, and then there's GPA. Are yeah, you but, referring to the Cal Grant GPA, Cecilia? Yes, yes. Can anyone talk to that for me? Because I, I'm, I'm not familiar with what should be different. The Cal Grant uh, program is a um, financial aid program, state level, and um, all high schools submit uh, GPAs to the system for calculation of eligibility of a Cal Grant when they enter college. And the GPA subjects in that calculation are not all inclusive, it's certain ones. It's just core classes. Oh, uh, so I wonder if you then might want to create a separate program, a Cal program, uh, right? That could, yeah. I think that would be the way to handle it. And then you'd have that you could compute the GPA using that Cal program. Okay. The difference is at there's academic GPA, which is those specific classes, which are the core classes in it, and it doesn't include PE. And then there's total GPA, which would be the GPA for all classes. So that's the difference. I see. Academic versus PE. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sure we can accommodate that. All right, I'll go back to the PowerPoint and we'll take questions, general questions from it, from everywhere. Um, and I'll also check the chat. Yeah, I'll look at chat now. Do you have an actual example of what a transcript would look like? We well, saw that, it in parts and we saw it in the reports. So, so the last report I looked at basically is a transcript, um, but we can do that in other formats, right? So if there's a particular format that you need that's common, um, we'll do that. Um, the I reason think what, why I was asking is mm -hmm. because it's got to say transcript on it for colleges, right? So if it says report, it's not going to work. If it says list of classes. Ex exactly, oh. exactly. So I think we'll make one that is like the official transcript. Actually, that will also have um, your adult school logo on the transcript at the top. And so that will be the official one. So we haven't created that yet. We have a report that has all that information, but we just haven't done the formatting for what your official one will look like. So yeah, yeah. We, we will definitely do that. Great, thank you. I just have one more question. Will it include signature lines for registrars or administrators or counselors to sign as verification? Yeah, if, if we need that, absolutely. We'll add a signature line. Thank you. You had mentioned a cost at some point. Do you have a idea of where that yeah, will I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll come out that with that soon after we release it in July. Those who are interested and want a pilot, there'll be no cost for the pilot. So um, contact tech support or contact me after the Summer Institute and, and we'd love to have you in the pilot. Um, those of you who are already running um, a transcript software program already, you may not wanna be in an early pilot just because in order to do it successfully, you have to do double entry, right? You're entering into your current program as well as into the um, our pilot software. So you may want to wait um, and do a transition later um, when it might be more streamlined. 
So that's just a recommendation, although anyone's welcome to be part of the pilot that wants to be. Richard, are, are you, or is CASAS looking for feedback now on what components to include in that, on that transcript since you haven't developed it yet? Absolutely. I, I think the best thing is just to write to me, um, R. Ackerman at casas.org. Sorry, my um, email's not on this last slide, <laughs> um, but it's R. Ackerman at casas.org, uh, R-A-C-K-E-R-M-A-N-N. -N. But you can also find me through tech support um, and so on. So, Quick question. How long will the pilot be? Will it, will it be for only one year, two years? Oh, the pilot's probably just uh, a few months. Um, well, we'll see how that goes. I mean, it, it's, it's variable depending on what's needed. <clears throat> okay, I think I've come to class questions here. In the filter for class, can you use numeric instead of alpha to search? Uh, Gabriel, is that possible? Uh, I don't see the question. Oh, um, in the filter for class, can you use numeric instead of alpha to search? Yes, you can okay. use both of them. Okay. And it will search either the, the code, the class code or the class name. Okay, very good. What if you have just a generic HSD class in TE instead of classes listed by subject? I think that the generic class is what we were, what our HSC was, because it was a, um, sort of like a stand in for a lab, right, where you might have 30 students that are all using some LMS, some learning management software, right? I think if that's what you're asking about, definitely. Uh, Gary is saying that Edgenuity, edge, edge however you pronounce that, does have an export feature, so that's good to know. Um, I'll have to find out more about that. We'll definitely try to do an import for that. Um, are the credits earned only in increments of five? No, I think it's one, right, Gabriel? Yes, credits are uh, increment of one, and we can also specify uh, uh, parts of a parts, like 25, 50 decimal point, under, after the decimal point. Okay. Um, it says, what if you make a mistake with a policy after you change it to in use? Um, so what you can do there is um, basically create a new one, but we have a duplicate button. So it'll duplicate what you've already done. It'll be in development, and then you can edit it and then make it in use. Is that right, Gabriel? Yes, and it will also save all the class associations when duplicating. So it's just very easy to, if you make a mistake after you switch to production, it's very easy to do a new one. Okay, very good. The same for the program. Oh yeah, you can do the same thing with the program. Very good. Uh, can you have excess algebra credits go to math instead of electives? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you can overflow from one subject to another or to electives specifically or automatically depending on how the program uh, settings are. Okay, very good. After in use, how can we change it to keep up with state requirements? Um, so we're talking about a program or a policy, or probably doesn't matter which. Um, so the only way to change is making a new one. So yeah, there, there you would use the duplicate. Um, yeah, so let's say that. So, so here, here's an example of where the program changed from 180 units to 185 units. So what you'd have to do is duplicate your program of 180, rename it to 185. You're gonna keep everything that you already created in that program for 180, but now you've, you'll modify it to add those five units and you'll have a new one and make that in use. Uh, let's see. Okay, that one is private. Um, is it, the intent in the future that we could import another school's transcript instead of so everyone asks me that and of course we'd love to import those transcripts we want to save you the effort of having to do that manually right no one wants to do that manually but it's a matter of do they provide it in an electronic format that we can import it right so no one has shown me that if, if someone does get their transcripts in a digital form especially a csv file that's that's the most common we will definitely look into importing it. We, we, we are, want to do that, right? So um, people just need to show me how they can get it from a school in digital format, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, general question, if I change the order of the columns I want to see under my username, does that change it for everyone in my organization? 
No, you, you, it, it creates a, a profile just for you. So all those customizations you do are seen only by you. And particularly on the computer you're using <laughs> where you set that up. So you could have two different computers with different setups. Uh, will this allow us to track manual level gains with credits? Rick, if I could clarify that question, that's my question. Oh, uh, currently students can gain a, uh, can achieve an EFL level gain with a pre and a post test, um, but they can also do it through credits. So they can, if they move from their sophomore year into their junior year, in terms of credit requirements, then we can count that as a manual level gain. So for my school, that requires 200 credits. If they go from 99 to 105, that counts as a manual level gain. And so that's what I'm asking, will this help us track that? Well, this is formally for credit bearing courses, right? So I'm, I'm confused how that level gain corresponds to a credit bearing course. Does it, or am I missing something? It does. So okay. um, if, for example, again, my student had 99 credits. Oh, are you saying that math. instead of a grade? Is that what you're saying? Well, just completed credits. They also get the grade. But um, let's say they did 20 of math, they did 10 algebra, they did 30 English, and then so they got to 99 and now they're moving up to 105 because they completed another two classes. And they earned an academic grade for those classes, but they also earned those credits for that class. Um, right now, we can manually change that into a manual level gain. Um, and so I'm asking, will this help us track that? Because it's tracking credits completed, just like this is. Yeah, so so obviously we're doing that. I guess what, what I'm not conceptually seeing is, is this manual level gain. So that may be something you have to illustrate for me afterwards, because I'm sorry I'm not grasping that yet. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see if we can help you with, with tracking that. Sure. All right. I'll email you later. Yeah, yeah. Send me more info and I'll, I'll try to answer that. Can additional credits outside of school be added later? Oh, yeah, yeah. We I think we answered that. And the answer is yes. yes. Um, Okay, just looking to see any other questions. Izzy, do you sorry. have any questions? I'm sorry, this is Bertha, uh, Betty Chavez. Hi. Uh, I had to step away. Um, but when I'm going into um, Top Enterprise, I don't, I probably missed the answer. Um, when would this be available? Because I don't see that. Um, so, so we're piloting beginning in, in July. We're, we're hoping to hit the July one date. Um, okay. It'll be very early July that you can join a pilot if you like. So contact okay. me um, okay. or contact tech support and they'll get you in touch with me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. No problem. Thank you for that. Someone's asking if they have to use CASA so they can keep using ASAP. Of course, this is you, you keep using whatever whatever software you have. This is just a new feature that if you want to use in TE, um, it, it now is available. Um, yeah, so I think we've answered this question about importing from other applications. We'd love to if if ASAP exports their transcript will import it. It's just a matter of whether you can get your vendor to, to provide, provide an export. Uh, when pulling a transcript years later for a student, do we have to know which grad program to pull the report? That's a good question, Gabriel. Do we have like a history of everyone in, I mean, or you'd be able to search a student anyway and find them, is that right? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so they're, in, they're in the system like any other student would be. And then once you pull up that student, then now you'll, you'll see that there's a graduation component to their student record, right? And that's where yes. you'll be able to find them. <clears throat> okay, let's see, we just have a few minutes left. Oh, one minute left. <laughs> Any, well, anyone have an urgent question? Just go ahead and speak now. You can unmute yourself. Is CASA's planning to provide any trainings for schools who wanna pilot this? Oh, sure, we'll, we'll definitely have training. Nothing set up yet because it's so new, but uh, you'll, you'll be seeing it probably in July. Any other questions? We just have a minute left. Izzy, did you capture any that I haven't answered? 
Uh, no, I think you got to the majority. I think you got all of them, actually. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, it was nice to see you in our first uh, virtual presentation, at least mine. <laughs> Um, and again, you can contact me at R Ackerman, R-A-C-K-E-R-M-A-N-N -N, at casas.org. And enjoy the rest of the Summer Institute. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you.